Good morning. I just got my kids off to school, finally. <clears throat> um, it was a little bit of a struggle bus this morning, but we, we did it. Um, so I have two hours to process three pounds of sausage, uh, 15 pounds of brisket. The brisket was on sale at our local, just our local grocery store for $2.99 a pound, which I thought was pretty dang good. So um, we have hardly any meat in the house, so we're just, there's no way that if we cooked this all up that our family would be able to eat it. So we're actually just going to cut it up into um, little pieces for st um, for stew or smaller pieces that we could cook up as steaks or something like that. And then one that we could do as a roast or that we could do as actual brisket. But there's no way that we could or need actually 15 pounds of meat at one time. Then we have, uh, what are these? Three pounds, these are each a pound and a half, three pounds of bacon that I need to cook up. I love to have bacon in the freezer so that when we can just crumble it on salads or just pop it in the microwave for a few minutes so that we can put it on sandwiches or whatnot and the kids are always loving bacon. So we need to do that. And then this is my second uh, 10 pound chub of, of ground beef. They were having, our local grocery store was having ground beef on sale for $1.99 a pound, which is great. It's a little bit higher fat content, it's 80-20, but um, we'll just strain that off and then um, I like to have it pre-cooked. Last week I did talk, I uh, pre-cooked it and did it as taco meat, so I put taco seasoning in it so that whenever we wanted we could just have a quick dinner for tacos. And But this one I'm just going to do as regular just ground beef with salt and pepper so that we can put it in whatever we want like spaghetti or lasagna or just put it on salads or something like that. So we have 10 pounds of ground beef, 15 pounds of brisket, 3 pounds of sausage, and 3 pounds of bacon that we have to do. So let me get out my stuff and I'll be right back. Okay, so here I've got two <clears throat> cookie sheets that we're going to line with parchment. Oh, i got to preheat the oven to 400. Make sure nothing's in there. Normally, I prefer to have our bacon pan fried, but with all this, I don't have time to do that. So, we're just going to do it in the oven. I'm going to put down some parchment so that it's not as horrible to clean up. Okay, so now we have our two cookie sheets lined with parchment so that it's easier to clean up. I know we're going to have to do, well I'm guessing we're going to have to do two rounds of this because this is a lot of bacon. But we've got two hours so hopefully... Hopefully we can get it all done. Do you ever get excited about the days when you don't have much to do and you know that whatever you start, you will probably be able to accomplish? This was one of those days for me. I knew that when I started the day off that I would have the time to get this project started and most likely finished before I had to go pick up the kids from school. I put in an earphone and turned on a good book and just went to town. The time passed by pretty quickly and it was just nice to have time by myself when I could get something done. I love my kids dearly, but when they are around, it takes about two or three times the amount of time to accomplish something than it would if I was just by myself. So I really cherish this time that I had to get something done that I wanted to get done. I get the worst cracked knuckles in the winter and I can tell that today 
is going to be a cracked knuckle kind of day because I'm going, with all this meat, I'm going to be washing my hands all the time. Okay, so I'll just put this off to the side so that we can put it in when the oven actually gets ready. Okay, so I'm going to start with, hmm, I think I'm going to start with this huge tub right here. We'll get up. Now, I, since I did this last week, I know that this whole thing is not going to fit in there. We have to do it five pounds at a time. So, this. And a big old knife. If you don't have pre-cooked ground beef or sausage in your freezer, boy, are you missing out. Make so we love the sausage for don't don't fall down. For um for pizza and um the taco meat uh ground beef we love for just tacos or taco salad or my husband puts in um, puts some ground beef in refried beans with a little taco seasoning and cheese and then he does a bean dip for work takes it to work so that makes it really nice for him to be able to take that and not have to make it necessarily There's our oven. So we'll put in the Do you guys have one of those meat masher things that has like five prongs on it? I have never gotten it, but people like swear by it, but I'm like, how much better could it be? I don't know. Maybe it is better. This is going to take a while, so let's just wait a second on that. I'm going to put this chub off to the side. Okay. Well, that is there. Put this back in the... Oh, i got to put the oven in there. The bacon in the oven. Start that bacon off with say 10 minutes and we'll check it. It will probably need more than that. Okay, if you guys don't have a food saver, it will literally save you. I mean, you can put stuff in Ziploc bags, but it doesn't last as nearly as long if I could get this in there. Anyway, so I got this. My brother actually sent me this food saver when my husband was in college so anyways 2015 or 2016 or something like that. oh I guess it helps to press the button um I was buying chicken in bulk and like 40 pounds and he noticed that I didn't have a food saver and that I was just putting them in ziploc bags and one day this just arrived on my porch for my brother so every time I use this, I think, to my brother because he was so generous in a time that we did not have very much money. So I think of him every time I use this. I'm just making bags um, to put the, I'm going to portion the brisket out. And then we can put them in here. It'll save much longer than if I just put them in. Ziploc bags. Give up here a little. So I can get that huge brisket over here. Okay. I think this little portion is going to be best for steaks. So I'm going to. I should have researched this beforehand. What's the best pieces to use, but. 
My husband and I do actually eat steak a lot. Well, we go through phases, actually. But I guess right now we are in a steak mode. This is just going to make a mess, and I'm just going to have to clean it up later, which gets to be okay. Okay. Let's... I'm going to cut this little fatty portion off. See what it's like under there. Oh, yeah. Ah, maybe I should. Hmm, that is mostly fat right there. So, I'm just going to do a big chunk. And we will freeze that. We can make it into something later. I would have to have a lot of friends in order to make this whole brisket. That would be way too much for us. I'm going to... No. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to put it in a bowl and then we can do all the food saving at one time. I really need to get some bigger bowls. But there's one. just my husband, well, I have a two-year-old and a five-year-old, and they, I know, a three-year-old and a five-year-old, and they love meat, but their little tummies can't eat much, so it's really just how much ever my husband and I can eat in within a reasonable time before it goes bad that I need to have it in portions. Holy moly, this, look at this fat. Can you believe that? That's crazy. Oops, our bacon is going. I know I'm not going to cook this as brisket probably. So I'm going to cut off some of this fat because can you imagine if that was in like a roast or something? Probably some of you are like, ah, don't cut all that off. I know. That is what gives it flavor. But since I'm not going to be really using it for the purpose that it was intended, we're going to cut it off. That's a little bit better. There we go. That's better. Okay. We're check on our bacon. It is way not done. Woo, maybe I need to open a window. Um, it is way not done, so I'm going to add a few more minutes. Oops. Timer. No. Timer. There we go. Six minutes. We'll see where that gets us. Okay, and this beef is, this ground beef is cooking up, so we are going to mix it up a little. I want it to get a little more brown than it currently is, but I also don't want some parts to be totally raw. So I'm going to mix it up and then we'll brown it a little more. Because did you know that your meat is like, this is, I mean that top part is brown, but it's not browned, which means I'll show you when I find some. My meat is not browned yet. Okay, that should be good for a little while. Five pounds of meat in one pan is a little much, but we've done it before, we can do it again. Okay, so now we have checked the bacon. It needs more time. We have brown, well, we've checked the ground beef. That needs more time. And we're gonna continue to work on this brisket. Ooh, I'm bleeding everywhere. Glad I'm getting this done with you guys while my kids are at school because when they are around all the, they have a tendency to touch and I mean, they're just little, so 
but they like to touch everything and that's not very good for maybe I'll cut this into sticks and then just cut some of that fat off I think that's what I'm going to do anyways they get little curious and then their fingers get in the blood and and that's just a whole nother slew of stuff that I don't really want to deal with right now. So I'm glad they're at school for this. I would rather have a thick steak than a short, than a uh, thin, wider one. I think they just cook a little bit better. It was right about now when I figured out that my knife was so dull. I hardly ever sharpen my knives, and that is something that definitely needs to happen more often in my home. So you can see where the the meat, the... The muscle has switched, so this muscle was running up and down. This muscle is running side to side because those fibers are running this way. And these fibers, I'm cutting them crosswise. So, the if you cut your meat like this instead of like this, uh, where the fibers are running long instead of short, tiny little fibers, um, then you'll have a more tender meat. So maybe, anyways, we're just going to do it because this meat was on sale and it was cheaper. And I think we're going to do, how many did we get? One, two, maybe we'll do one more. I will see where we, oh well. Can you tell I'm indecisive? I have the hardest time deciding what to eat at a restaurant. Give me five choices and I can choose really easily from those five choices, but give me a whole menu of options and I am like struggle busting it because I cannot, there's too many options. Ooh, and our bacon. Holy fat. The only reason I'm cutting this brisket into different pieces is because we had like literally no meat at home. Oh, it's getting better, but still needs some time. So I'll add some milk. Um, we had like no meat, and so when I saw the sale price on this, I was just like, oh, that's a lot of meat for a really great price, so I will repurpose it. And we used to have a smoker, but we didn't use it as often as I thought we would, so we actually sold it later. Which was kind of funny because we sold it for the same price that we bought it for, but because it had been a little while and inflation had gone up, um, the, the smokers were a lot more expensive than they were when, well actually I bought it on clearance too, so I sold it back for the clearance price, which was a good deal for them. And it was a good deal for us because we got the same price that, anyways, we got to use it for free essentially. I'm just going to cut this in two actually. Because this is more like a Jerica portion right there. That will be yummy. Maybe I'll cut this sideways and do little chunks uh, for like a 
uh, uh, stew or something. I think I will do that. And I am using like, oh, why am I using this knife? I don't know. Once again, here I am, I chose a dull knife and then I switched it out for a noodle knife. Great life choices. Oh yeah. So see when it was like this, the fibers, let's see if I can bring it closer. The fibers were running this way. So if I left those fibers really long, it would have been pretty tough probably. But because I'm cutting them short, the fibers are only that long, so you don't have to chew through, you don't have to work as hard to chew it. One time I was in a restaurant with, I think I was like 12 or something, and my friends, um, they only had two kids, and so they brought me along to a lot of stuff, which was really nice of them, but now as a parent with two kids, I'm like, oh, now I know why, because they wanted the kids to be a little bit more entertained, which is what I do with our cousins. But anyways, I was at a restaurant with my friends, and I could not chew the meat that I was given. Like, it was so hard. I could try to swallow it. It wasn't going down. I felt like I was going to choke. Not the best of experiences. Now I learned if I have a piece of tough meat to cut it the direct, the correct way so that, so I don't have to work on it as much. Okay, so this meat here is doing pretty darn good. Okay, so let me show you. When I say browned meat, I don't mean that the meat is just brown. See, that look, Good gravy. It's too hot, I can't touch it. See this browned part? It looks a little crusty. That's what gives it all of its flavor. So we, we don't just want the meat to be brown, but we want it to be browned. Still got a little ways to go on this, which is just fine. We are back to this brisket, and I have a very dull knife, but we're just going to deal with it anyways. I never even put in my audio book. I've been looking so forward to it. Okay, so the the meat is done browning. So I'm gonna bring it over here and we're going to strain it. I have a bowl under this to catch the grease. Oh, it's so heavy. We'll just let that sit there for a little while and get all the grease out. Maybe we'll put the other five pounds in here to start browning too. I feel it. We're almost well, making crock. Okay, so this bacon. Woohoo! Looks done. Gotta find somewhere to put it. Ooh, 
Now, back when I needed to switch these, I wasn't paying attention. That got a little crispy. Okay, I'm going to finish this up with my two very dull knives. Ten minutes and switch it so it doesn't get as burnt. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Okay, so now I have cleaned this area because it was a bloody mess. I'm gonna grab my food saver bags that I just sealed one end of. Ooh, I need to grab a, a marker. Let's do that big brisket chub first.
time we're going to switch them so they don't get burnt. Cooked on top and burnt. Oh, I'm going to need two of these. Cooked on top and burnt on the bottom. Okay, while the bacon is cooking for the last time, I've got the brisket um, all packaged up. The first bacon is done. I'm going to set out, um, I'm going to brown this sausage. And it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to clean that pan because why waste another pan? Why take the time to clean it if we're just going to get it dirty again with more meat? So. I was at a point here where I couldn't really do anything else for the meat. The cooking just had to take time. And so I decided instead of sitting down and watching a show or something, that I would clean up because it was something that I would thank myself later for. And I would be grateful that I did it so that when I was done, I could just be done. And I wouldn't have to do a whole load of, of um, dishes or anything like that. Okay, so the sausage is done browning, and I got to go get kids from school. So I'm gonna take this off, let it be straining um, the grease off while I am gone, and then when we get back, we will um, package up the bacon and the sausage and the ground beef that's all made. But at least it's all made, and there's no bloody mess for the kids when they come back. So at least we're done with that. Okay, so we've got our bacon, ground beef, and sausage. And Jack is chewing on some bacon because he just got home from school. And he saw that pile of bacon and could not resist. Mm-hmm. Huh. Definitely true. Definitely When I portion out this meat, I try and figure out how much our family would be able to eat in about a meal. So I think I did here two or three cups worth of ground beef in each package so that there wouldn't be a ton of leftovers, but there was also enough for a whole meal for our family. Do you want to be treated like a queen? Oh, yeah. Maybe you want to be treated like a queen and have all this st stuff I have. Ooh, like piece, of, piece of bacon and butter toast and grapes. Aren't kids just the best? I loved that little conversation between Jack and Navy and how because he had bacon and buttered toast and grapes that he had been treated like a king and he wanted his sister to be able to have the same um, same treatment. Okay, I know that this machine has like a limit of how many suck things yeah. it can do. Okay. So it just needs to rest for a minute, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Because it was not performing at its full okay. function like and it was. Anyways, also the grease is not helping at all. It's usually best if it's cold because then the grease doesn't okay, like it doesn't. suck up there. Sorry, my kids are playing. Uh, they got a Q-Co box. Anyways, um, so we're going to put that on hold for a second and do the bacon. I'm just going to put the bacon in these freezer bags because I know I'm going to use these fast. Like within the month, we'll probably go through. Maybe so. We only have all this on all that. We snitched okay. enough. And of the burnt stuff, I took off most of the, the really yeah. bad parts. Those are the things you have to 
For the whole time that you see that bag there, the food saver is trying to suck out the air, which it really shouldn't take that long. But later I realized that the bottom seal hadn't sealed all the way, and so there it was letting air in through the bottom. So it was just continually sucking and sucking and sucking, and it wouldn't stop because it was detecting air. But it literally took me about 15 or 20 minutes to figure this out of trying this one bag over and over and over. If this doesn't work, then I'll just have to put the sausage in freezer bags. But we do use the sausage fast enough that it wouldn't really matter if I did the food saver or not. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll just do that. I'll put the sausage in freezer bags, and then we'll just let the food saver bag, the food saver machine, <clears throat> rest for an hour or two. Then I'll try it again. If it doesn't work again, then I will have to. Figure it out. Candy? Yeah. Can you reach it? You can pick two pieces, okay? Uh, the camp. Sausage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine meals worth of ground beef. Well, it could be more depending on if I put it in it. If I use it for a topping or something. Have my head on anymore. Okay, sounds good. Three bags of bacon to use for later for sandwiches or on top of salad or whatnot. One thing of brisket that we can use for later. That's obviously not cooked yet. Another brisket. Yeah. Just a moment, okay. Brisket cubes that I'm probably gonna use for um, like a stew or something like that. Cut some little steaks out. So we've got four steaks in there. And then the end of the brisket that we'll use, maybe we'll smoke it on my dad's smoker or something. Anyways, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours worth of work and lots of meals worth that I will be thanking myself later for. Um, that will make life a lot easier. And I got to do it while the kids were at school. That's the best part. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining me and being in the kitchen with me. I honestly started this channel because I loved watching YouTube videos of other people cooking while I was cooking. And it was just, I don't know, a companionship or something. But I thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it with me. And I hope that you enjoy these videos.